Welcome to 00 Neil, my name is Tris and I'd like to talk to you about an exciting project that I've been working on since a young boy. I've been watching my dad build some wonderful models uh, from buildings, uh, doing his layouts and watching him build up engines. It's just been fascinating to me and something that when I was younger I wasn't really interested in doing, it looked very complicated but as I've got older and back into the hobby I've watched what he's doing and I thought I'd like to do that and I've always fancied the idea of making an 040 pannier tank engine because the pannier tank engine is a beautiful loco. There's something wonderful about it, I don't know just that shape and this iconic look you know featuring the railway children it's just a stunning engine. Then there's the 1366 which is a bit more dinky with the shorter wheelbase. I just loved all that and I thought having an 040 version would be nice and I've seen other people do this and do these wonderful bodies to fit on the Hornby 040 chassis but what I felt was we need to be making one about this big with the pecket size um, it's just something really cute about it and it's the appeal so that's what I went and did and I'd like to talk to you about how I went about doing it this small little pannier has been a massive amount of work and I was questioning to myself, well, why am I doing this? <laughs> but the whole reason was just to enjoy myself and learn about the process. You see these big companies producing these engines, you know, they're manufacturing in a, in a grand scale. And I'd like to go through that process of, if I had to manufacture my own, this isn't exactly what they'd be doing, because they'd be casting things in metal and machining chassis or whatever. Um, but what do I have available to me? Okay, I've got a 3D printer, I can use that. I've got a CNC machine in my garage, which I use for work and you know personal projects. So I thought, well, I can use that as well. I've got a lathe, so why can't I do it? Um, I'm kind of, I've got about 11, 12 years worth of experience on CAD design, so let's have a go. So I had to go through that process, but before I could draw anything, I had to come up with an idea. So I like the panniers, so I got some of these um, four millimeter drawings of panniers. I got it, I actually blew the picture up so I could look at it, and I stuck two together, and I end up having an 040 pannier. That's all fine, but the wheels were too big. Uh, fine, I need to do something a bit smaller. I can do that in CAD. But then making the picture smaller, like right here, I can then measure from that. That's now on four millimeter scale. I can get all my proportions right and design a chassis about that running plate that's at the bottom. So drawing that up, I had to start with bits. So I went and saw my dad and I said, well, I explained to him what I wanted to do. And he showed me a website called Branch Lines. Well, basically I gave them a call. I got their brochure and I ordered the bits that my dad recommended getting. So I actually had a 50 to one gearbox on it. If I did it again, I'd probably go the 30 to one that you can get, or 39 to one. That's one of these little packets that you get with all the bits in. You bend the uh, main bits around and you start screwing the motors in. I've got a really small nine by 16 motor to go inside. It's really diddy, because I've got a diddy body to go on the top of this diddy chassis. With that done, I ordered it all. I got myself some wheels, I think it was, and axles and Gibson bushes, and worked my way through getting all the bits that I needed. So then drawing it up, fantastic process. I'm gonna make it out of a solid lump of brass. And so I need to machine that. Got the CNC machine out, and started machining that chassis. And that took a bit of time, um, but it was done. I ended up making four chassis. So you get to the stage where you've you've made all your parts, it's looking shiny, but you fit it together, you're not quite happy with some of the fits. So you make another one to the point that you then have another chassis that's then working how you want. I end up having two good ones and two that were not so good that I thought we'll leave them uh, for another day. So I'm gonna have two engines running eventually. So that's wonderful. Once that's together and the, the chassis is moving and I'm happy, I need to print the body off. Um, and the body took a long time to draw to begin with. I had to get the main shapes out um, with the pannier tanks looking right relative to the boiler shape with the cab, protrusions on each end, getting the buffers at the right heights. That was really good fun. I ordered lots of bits from, it was uh, Wizard Models, uh, Dark Castings, I got bits and bobs from them. Um, and so then I had to get the, the vacuum pipes 
find my words, out front in rear, the whistles, and anything I could buy I wanted to get hold of, the handrail um, bits that go around the outside of the pannier tanks and onto the front, the smoke dock, uh, smoke box um, door handles, got hold of some of them, but the rest of it I had to print, the chimney, the, um, the smoke box door, the, the buffers, then you have the dome and the safety valve, that's all, all printed as well, so that was, you know, something that I had to do. And then on the back end of the logo is one of my favourite bits where you get all the detail. And with an O-gauge one that I've printed here, we're able to look at where I've printed the um, little hooks on the back for putting, I guess, um, a big you know, shovel and that will go there and put all the rivet detail in that wraps its way up and around. And as someone that enjoys drawing parts, um, it was really enjoyable. Um, I had to model everything. So all the bits that I got, modeled them, I had to make them, well not make all of it, but you know, I had to make them fit. Um, and anyway, fine, right, now we need to print it. And with printing, there was some issues where you print it in a certain angle, you lose detail, or you get something called aliasing, where you get steps because of the way that you've got the um, UV light coming through this 4K screen it's all in squares so sometimes if you want something coming up smooth it can only build it up like Lego so what you have to do is you have to print it at this 45 degree angle and it means that you get these smooth surfaces and that's wonderful um, I had to invest in a better printer to get this to work because my smaller um, Anycubic um, I think it's just a photon um, did a nice job. It printed out the little parts, but it wasn't quite right. So I got uh, an Ecubic Photon Mono X, if I can use my words, um, which does a larger area and it allowed me to do actually some better prints. It, it performed better, um, which is wonderful. And I was able to get the desired results, but I got through a lot of these bodies and I wasn't too happy because fine. Um, but I got to the point that I got reliable printing at the right angles, getting all the detail, separating the body into two pieces. I'll just grab these two. And so I have the cab at the rear, the, the front, and then I end up sticking them together, putting some glue in, clean up all the edges, and then we have to paint it. So painting, lots of fun. I got some great Western greens, and I used some rail match paints. I used my acrylics, and I painted it on. I would argue that my painting skills aren't the best. I felt I didn't get the finish that I wanted. Actually, the print was really smooth, but I now have a, a texture on, on the surface. But with practice, I'll get better, um, and that will come with time and the more that I do. So, got the paint on, get the transfers on, start fitting it all together. It's looking great. The running plate is nice and simple, just got the main black colour and then red ends, and then get the transfers on there as well. And I'm calling it a 95XX. I don't believe there was one and I like to think that there was maybe plans for one you know in this alternate world I know it's fictitious but you'll have this scenario that it never got made so now we're making it once it was all together I went down to my father's to have some running shots going around there I want to take some pictures for the Hornby magazine because there's an article which will have a bit more detail about what I've done here but having it running around my dad's layout was really wonderful for me to show my father this engine, um, after spending all these years watching him make them, was really honestly a pleasure. I'm looking forward to doing more. I'd like to make an O-gauge version of it using this kind of principle of just scaling everything up uh, and make other engines. Make some, again, that from the head, ideas, or even make some that 
exist that haven't been made already but that's something for the future something for me to enjoy and maybe something for me to share with you thank you for watching my channel i hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you next time bye i'd like to say thank you to the channel supporters without your help this would be a lot harder and i really appreciate the feedback that i get from you all if you'd like to check out my patron or the channel member areas you'll see the links below if you'd wish to join and join in on it, helping out the channel and adding in your own way thank you bye